Hi, this is Sandeep Jali, Karam Sud and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 184 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the risks associated with using the AMPLATS left guide. The patient was an elderly woman who had multiple comorbidities and multiple prior interventions in the LAD as well as the right coronary artery. She has had multiple repeat interventions in the LAD and had significant angina. She was sent for treating the LAD with a drug-coated balloon and also performing PCI of the distal RCA. And this is the angiogram. We do have the instant stenotic lesion in the LAD that doesn't seem too bad. That was recently intervened upon. And the patient also had a lesion in the distal RCA, which was instant as well. So we first treated the LAD, predilated, and then used a 3 by 30 agent dry-coated balloon with uh, a nice final result. But then we did have difficulty with the right coronary artery. We tried to engage it with an AL1, but were unable to do so, and eventually used a JR47 French guide catheter. Despite using a six French guide extension, we had a lot of difficulty delivering equipment to the distal RCA. We can see here all the system prolapsing into the LV, and uh, we were essentially unable to complete the intervention. So we decided to try again with the AMPLATS guide so as to get a little better support. However, while we were trying to engage the RCA, we saw sudden changes on the EKG and a brief uh, contrast injection confirmed that we had acute vessel closure. We did not save that uh, fluoro, uh, fluoroscopy. However, it was acute vessel closure. We can see the EKG changes. So what are the causes of acute vessel closure? Several of them. But in this setting where we are manipulating a guide into the ostium, this is most likely the result of a dissection. And how do we treat the dissection? The key question is whether we have a wire in the vessel or not. If we have, then it's much more straightforward, then we just have to put a stand. But if not, then we have to be able to get a wire through. And that can be challenging because the wire may want to just follow the path of least resistance, which is the path of the dissection. And if we cannot get a wire through, then depending on the vessel and the patient tolerance of the occlusion, then one might need to go for emergency coronary bypass, or if this is a smaller vessel, potentially treat it medically. So what did we do in this case? We took out the AMPLAT guide and used, again, the JR4 guide catheter. We could not advance a wire in the true lumen, so we decided to use a CTO technique. This is the Stingray balloon. It's a re-entry system for CTOs that can help here as well. But part of the problem is we have calcium and we have previous stents, so the re-entry has to happen in the proximal part of the RCA, which is more complex. While we're trying to do this, the patient now developed severe bradycardia and hypotension as well as uh, vomited, so she had to have emergent intubation and she was started on pressures. That helps stabilize the hemodynamics, and then uh, we try it again with the reentry. This is uh, using a guy next to wire, and then eventually we were able to advance it through the side port, one of the side ports, and then it seems to be going inside the true lumen of the distal RCA. However, then we were able to balloon, although it was very challenging delivering balloons and restore some undergrade flow, which really helped with uh, with the patient, but we still have. Uh, a lot of difficulty advancing equipment through that mid part of the RCA. It is possible that it's interacting with the plaque or with the previously placed stents. So eventually, after a lot of attempts and uh, after using the guide extension, deep seating of the guide, we did stand uh, all the way from the distal RCA all the way to the ostium. The downside of this technique, which we can see here, is that uh, we lost several of the branches of the proximal and mid-right coronary artery, a lot of the acute marginal branches, which is important, as we'll discuss in a second. But the patient uh, did okay. The ejection fraction was okay by echocardiogram. The hemodynamics were okay, which was 22, and the patient went to the unit. Unfortunately, she did have significant issues overnight. She developed severe bradycardia, and um, she also had bleeding from the left uh, axis side. And then she was brought back to the cath lab, 
I did an angiogram of the right that was still patent, so no problems there. But uh, the patient was very bradycardic, so we did place a temporary pacemaker, check the left femoral, and um, we didn't have any issues there. So the patient did have a prolonged stay in the ICU. She so did have a mildly reduced uh, RV function on the echocardiogram, but uh, the pacemaker, the temporary pacer, and the pressures were eventually weaned, and the patient was discharged home. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that the AMPLAT's left guides are providing excellent support, very strong support. At the same time, they may have a higher risk of dissection compared with the JR4 guides. So they have to be used with caution, but they do have a real risk, as seen in this case, of causing dissection and acute vessel closure. Now, when we have uh, acute vessel closure, we may have acute hemodynamic changes. In this case, uh, we did have um, uh, QRS widening and significant bradycardia. And most likely, the bradycardia was the occlusion of the conus branch supplying the SA node. So the patient did require a temporary pacer, but eventually um, RV function and uh, the rhythm recovered. And finally, what uh, saved this case was the application of CTO-PCI techniques. We used the Stingray reentry system, and by doing that, we were able to reenter and restore the flow into the right coronary artery. Thank you.